Today I'm going to be talking you through some of the plugins that you can install onto WordPress that I've used uh, quite frequently on some of the sites that I've done in the past using WordPress. Some of the ones obviously will be hopefully quite useful to you. Most of them are one, there are a couple, sorry, that I will always, pretty much always activate and install straight away because they are plugins that allow functionality that is a uh, is common or um, or necessary on the majority of sites that I use, whether it's basic things from comment, um, comment anti-spam, uh, to things like a custom login um, template plugin that you can install as well. Things like that are normally things that I'll nearly always install, but there are obviously some more advanced plugins that you can use to help with the functionality of your site, security, performance, all kinds of things. And I'll be going through just a couple of those uh, in a short while later on in this video. First of all, I'm just going to show you how to update because um, I I know we skipped over it in the last video, how to update WordPress when an update comes down. And as you can see, I've logged into the back uh, the back end, the dashboard area, and up the top you can see this yellow bar saying WordPress 3.2.1 is available, please update now. Now you can either click on the please update now link or you can go over here under the dashboard just click that down, there you are. So you've got home and updates and if you click on updates, you know, number two next to it, so two updates, and we can see that we have a version of WordPress to update and also a update for the 2011 theme. So to update themes, all you need to do is you can either select all or you can select them, take that off, select them individually, and then just hit update themes. When you hit that, it will come up to the update themes page. You'll get a small little animation here that's telling you where we are progress wise in terms of updating the theme. Now, while any form of update is running through this WordPress system. It a in sorry, it enters maintenance mode. So if somebody tries to view your site whilst this is going on, they will be just shown. Um, I, can't, I can't remember the exact page, but it's um, just a you know default 404 page. But it comes up saying this site is in maintenance right now. Please check again shortly. And as you can see, after it's uh, finished that update, it does disable the maintenance mode again for you. All updates have been completed. Please return to the themes page. Return to WordPress updates. So we'll go back to the updates page. And as you can see, the theme updated properly and with our uh, update number of updates available has dropped down to one. So it's just the WordPress one. Now, there's two ways of updating WordPress, as I've mentioned before. You can either download the latest version and follow the README instructions for how to upgrade. Uh, that will involve you downloading the file from WordPress.org and then uploading the extracted files through an FTP uh, client to your server and to your web directory. The other easy way is just clicking update now and hopefully you'll be able to see that it doesn't take usually it doesn't take that long it does depend slightly on your internet but I know this is actually a fairly short version as you can see we've already finished but it'll unpack the update, it'll verify, it'll install, it'll upgrade the database and then WordPress will hopefully have been successfully updated. You can then go back to the dashboard there are no more updates available. If we click on updates, when there's none, obviously they're just a blank screen of saying everything's up to date. You can click check again in case yours hasn't uh, automatically checked to see, but you know it does say when it was last when it last looked for them. So we'll go back to the home page now, and we're going to go on to plugins. Now, if we click on the little plugin drop down, you can see we've got a couple here. So we'll click onto plugins here. And this is our list of plugins that have been installed. They aren't activated. Now there's quite a, a lot of differences between an activated, deactivated, installed, uninstalled, etc. etc. So with a plugin on WordPress, you first of all have to install it. Now you can install this in two ways. You can click on the add new here or up the top here. And you can search through the WordPress plugin library. Or if you find a plugin online you want to use, again you can search the online version of the library rather than from your WordPress backend. Uh, you can or dashboard, sorry, you can choose to download the plugin files manually, extract the files, and there will nearly always be a README instruction file that you'll need to use in order to find out the right place on your FTP. Now the usual place that they go is, I believe. Uh, WP hyphen includes and then in the plugins file. I think that's right. It might be. I don't think it's content. I think it's includes. I haven't, I haven't looked. I haven't had to manually upload them in a long while because it's just easier for me to add them through the interface here, and everything seems to work fine with this. So I've had no need to. 
But if you prefer doing it via FTP, it's fairly simple. The instructions in each plugin file are usually ever so slightly different, so you, you must take care that you are uploading them to the right place if you're doing that manually. Anyway, once you've actually uploaded them, they will appear on this screen as installed. Uh, when you add a new plugin via the online library, it will come up here like these are here, and you'll have options activate, edit, or delete. Now, you're not really going to need to edit the plugin unless you want to change, unless it's a visual plugin um, that you may want to change some of the CSS code for, but you can do that in the editor down there and just choose the plugin file from the drop down menu. The one you're going to be focusing on is activate and delete. Obviously, if you've downloaded the wrong one and you don't want it, hit delete and it'll delete it quite quickly for you. To activate a plugin, just click activate, let the page reload, and the plugin will now activate. Now, this plugin that I've activated here, Hello Dolly, is one that comes with WordPress as a stock plugin. Um, it says this is not just a plugin, it symbolizes the hope and enthusiasm of an entire uh, generation summed up in two words sung by the most famous. By, by famously by Louis Arms, Louis Armstrong, Hello Dolly. So you'll see random lyrics basically from Hello Dolly in the upper right hand corner. So here we are. And if I just refresh the page, you should see some different lyrics. Yep, so you're still going strong has now appeared. Yay. <laughs> right, so the plugin above is a very, very uh, useful plugin. I've got it running on most of my sites. Uh, along with some other anti-spam just to help out but again it's used by millions and it's one of the best ways to protect your blog from comment and trackback spam so people posting and it just being random links or information or you know generic spam bots basically so we'll hit activate there's actually some additional instructions for this and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to enter an API key now some plugins will require an API key so what we're going to do is we'll right click and go open a new tab for that and we're going to need to sign up for a key here so it's very simple stuff oh it used to be free maybe not okay I used to have a free version of that so Oh, yeah, now I remember now. I've remembered why I've stopped using it because it is no longer free. Right, okay. That's fine. Oh, I've gone on to the wrong one. Sorry, we'll just skip back to this one. There we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, I've, com I've completely forgotten. That is now one I can't use. If I look, this is now my other site. Um, I used to, yeah, so again, I used to have this. Uh, as a free version, they used to have it as a free version, so I've used that on this site. So actually, what I'll show you is I'll show you Sabre. So it's a simple anti-bot registration engine, which is quite useful, um, and does general anti-spam as well. So now it's actually quite good because it means I can show you to deactivate. And I actually delete this one. So you know to deactivate a plugin when you no longer want it, you can hit deactivate and then hit delete. It will come up with this menu saying, "Are oh, you about to remove the following plugin?" Do you want to delete the files? Yes. If not, you know, no and return to the plugin menu. That's now been deleted, so that's excellent. Got rid of that simple. So we're going to add a new plugin now. So we're going to look for Sabre. All it is, simply type it into the search engine and hit search. You can obviously search for term, author, or a tag. And you've got, um, you know, recently uploaded, featured, popular, newest, etc should you want anything like that uh, to just you know browse through the latest the latest ones or you know just have a quick look through without having to type anything into the search if you're not sure what kind of plugin you're looking for so this one's the one we want at the top here Sabre it's actually got another one underneath but this is the one we want Sabre version 2.0 sorry version 1.20 completely misread that and you can either click on the details tab, which will obviously take you to I'll open it up in a new tab, take you to this page, which is loaded inside yours, uh, inside your site, but it's actually pulling the information from the WordPress uh, plugin store, basically. So here we can see exactly what it will do, allow you to do. We can see installation information. So this is the information you'll, you'll need to follow should you download it manually 
rather and upload it to install rather than doing the automatic process I'm about to show you. No harm in either way, it's just personal preference. You've got some screenshot stuff here, so it's going to add some uh, almost some anti spam stuff to the registration fields and stuff like that. We've got changelog FAQs and other notes as well, but we'll get rid of that now. And we just want to do install now. Are you sure you want to install this plugin? Yep, yeah, we do. And again, it will just be the, pretty much the same update screen that you've seen previously when updating WordPress or a theme. It will run through un unpacking it, installing it, and hopefully say successfully installed. And we're going to go and activate the plugin. Right, so that plugin is now completely activated. Now, some will have options of configure next to them once they've been activated. Now, obviously, where's the delete gone? Well, you can only delete a plugin once you've deactivated it. This is obviously because it needs to be the database needs to be told that this is no a no longer active plugin and therefore can be deleted. If you try, and, if it was to delete it while it was active, it could uh, cause some issues and corruption with other. WordPress data. So that's why we deactivate the plugin before we are allowed to delete it. It's also advisable that before performing large updates to either the WordPress system or if you're backing up or updating to a newer version of a plugin and it's a major change, that you deactivate the current version of the plugin first before running the updater. This is just so that uh, the database doesn't mistake the newer um, plugin source code and database changes that it may imply with that of the older one and then try and keep the older one rather in rather than installing the new one. So it's always a good idea to act, deactivate first. Anyway, the configure menu for Sabre just links through to its actual settings which can be found in under the tools menu where it's installed itself. Now we've got a list of options for this and you'll find this with each plugin. Each plugin will obviously have so many different settings that you can apply unless it's you know a really simple plugin that just changes you know, a specific thing on the site and doesn't need any obvious editing. But most of them will come with some form of setting based menu. So we can choose to install Capacha, use a white background, you know, which letters and characters are accepted, the string length, contrast, etc. etc. So, you know, all the stuff that you may need for some anti spam stuff. Now I'm going to switch over now to my actual blog where I've got some other plugins installed and I'll just talk you through a couple of them that you may find of interest and you may want to note the names down should you want to install them. This one here, BM Custom Login, is quite useful. Um, I don't have it activated on my site at the moment because I need to design the PSD for it. But basically what it allows you to do is rather than have that, and I'll show you on, my, on the uh, YouTube one that we've been using, if we log out, rather than having this fairly plain boring WordPress login page if you activate it and install it it actually gives you a custom template for that login window and it also provides you with the PSD file so you can open it up in Photoshop and redesign the login image that you'd like all you then have to do is upload it back to the template um, plugin folder and it will obviously display on your site it's quite useful especially if you're designing a site for a client that wants you know their logo you thought it'd be nice to have their logo rather than WordPress, or say you know have WordPress and then their logo with it as well. Just gives it a bit more of a custom feel. Page Links too, a very very useful plugin, and I I, ne I nearly always end up using this on a site that uses WordPress. Now Page Links too um, is very useful in the sense that if I just go to my blog page, as you can see at the top, we've got a home link about me and a back to site link. Now that back to site link, if I click on it, goes back to my main web page. Now, how have I actually done that? Because if we, that's actually a page tab, that should be going to a page. Um, and the only way to create those, unless you sort up, uh, set it up in a custom menu and then fiddle around with a lot of code in the back end just to do this one simple thing, um, isn't possible to code manually. So the easiest way of doing it is with this plugin called Page Links 2. Now, when you're in the page view, um, that you're wanting to use, you've made the title saying back to site and there's a just adds a little tick box and a URL link at the bottom of the page saying where do you want this page to link to. So you type in the URL and tick it and what that does is that instead of redirecting you to the taking you to the page called back to site that I've created, it takes you to the web link that I've provided when you click on that page link. So it's quite a useful plugin. Run PHP is just a simple a uh, plugin that allows you to put PHP code into a post and I'll, with a tick box at the bottom to allow any PHP code you've typed to run physically on the page. By default WordPress prevents this so that you can't be running um, 
dodgy scripts basically um, on your page. I've also got the tweet me retweet the retweet button. Sorry, so obviously it allows me to retweet my blog posts, and you can see that here over in the right hand corner. Quite a nice little plugin, and that does give you some options with the CSS about where to place it and how how it looks and things like that. User avatar. Um, obviously, I've set, I've installed this to allow me to link my profile image up to my gravatar image so it stays the same depending on which site I'm going to which is quite useful now this is a quite a useful plugin wordpress.com stats now wordpress.com stats requires a wordpress.com API key it is free all it requires you to do is have an account on wordpress.com now you might be thinking well wordpress.com is the online uh, allows you to sign up with a username so Harry Finn and gives you harryfin.wordpress.com that then gives you a WordPress blog with some obviously slight restrictions on the customization. So why do we need that? Well, you need an account with them so that they can monitor your site statistics with that API key. Now, all you need to do once you've created an account with them is you can choose to link a third-party or self-hosted blog, which is what I've done. So with my WordPress.com account, I've linked my harryfin.co.uk forward slash blog WordPress system with that so the stats that I receive for my blog are now linked to that key which is a very useful tool and I'll show you that plugin page in a minute because it's actually quite useful uh, in showing it's the 11 o'clock thank you Mac yep it's still telling me the time uh, the next plugin down is WordPress mobile pack it basically just um, installs a mobile theme so if you go to harryfin.co.uk forward slash blog on your mobile device it should come up with m.harryfin .co.uk forward slash blog and it should just show you a really nasty <laughs> basic it's a really basic theme that's what it is uh, of my site at some point I will get around to designing a mobile theme so it looks a bit nicer but with most smartphones they either allow you to see the full site anyway or display it a bit nicer the final one I've got on here is WP polls it's a basic Ajax poll system for your blog you can obviously have a voting system and it automatically updates it with the use of Ajax dynamically on the page to show you the results. It is very versatile and does allow lots of customization themes and CSS styles to be edited so there are lots of options with that. Obviously these are just a few that I'm using on this site and there are plenty more that you can have a look at. I will, if I find, uh, if I come across any more that I think might be of interest to anyone beginning starting up with a WordPress site. I will mention them in the description later on, or I'll leave a uh, comment on the end of another video or something like that. I'll just show you the statistics um, plugin because it's quite useful. As you can see, it's actually installed itself under the dashboard with site uh, site stats. So if we click on that, this is showing the site the st site st ugh, sorry I'm getting tongue tied this morning. This is actually showing the site stats for the video. Uh, for the site, sorry, dear me, must be early. So as we can see, it shows a nice little bar graph representing views per day, weeks, months, etc. We've got referrers, so where these, where the links coming, uh, where are the people coming from? Are they clicking on the blog link? Are they clicking on another link somewhere else? We've got search engine terms that are coming up. I've got no idea what cross dressing how it comes up there. There is one post on my blog, probably right at the beginning, if you really want to go and have a look. Um, of me wearing a dress, it was at my 18th birthday, there was lots of alcohol involved and I rest my case. So you know, it's not something I do you know every weekend, definitely not. <laughs> anyway, on the right hand side we get the top posts and pages, so what are the, what pages are people looking at the most and yeah lovely, two people have been looking at that. I'll show you it now just so you know, I've saved embarrassment later on, I really don't mind. I'm not going to click on the link but it's me and my brother on our 18th birthday. <sighs> Dressed up in dresses. Enjoy. And goodbye. There we are. <laughs> so obviously it shows the latest posts that you've, uh, the most, uh, the, blah, blah, sorry, the posts that have received the most views in the most, uh, in the recent days, or, re or today, sorry. Obviously shows what happened yesterday. We've got a number of clicks, where they came from. And it doesn't obviously count your own visits to your site, so you can't just repeatedly spam your site to get more hits and things like that. Which is, you know, quite useful I suppose to actually get a proper uh, idea of how many people are visiting your site. So views today I have had 25 views already today. My busiest day was April 30th 2011 and so far I've had 2,263 unique views.
Okay, so that is a brief overlook of plugins, how to delete them, install them, activate them, and just play around with some of the settings. Obviously, there are a lot more to plugins, but I don't want to be going into too much depth with each individual one because obviously it's going to take a lot more time and it won't be useful to all of you. If there is a specific plugin you're having issues with or you'd like some more in depth uh, tutorial base done on, uh, let me know, email or PM me and I'll uh, try and sort that out for you. I do apologise, now I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I do apologise for the fact that this video is obviously up a lot later than expected and there's no cut, there's no, the first custom theme tutorial isn't up. I wasn't able to actually upload videos to YouTube this week, I had some issues uploading. Um, so I'm hoping this one goes up alright. But video, the next video will be up sometime next week. I'm hoping before the end of the week this time. Um, but that will be the first one on theme customization. Just a note about that. Uh, I will be going over, obviously, areas within the CSS file. So it will be quite a long video. I know these are turning into quite long videos themselves. But it will be going into quite a lot of depth with the CSS code and you know which styles affect which areas of your theme and how best to navigate that and troubleshoot areas. And also in, in find out which areas to change the styling of. So it will be quite a code based video, but I will try and take it you know fairly slow so you can take down as much detail as possible and obviously anyone that's watching who wants to start, who's have you know starting out with code and WordPress the system as well will hopefully be able to get to grips with that as you know as easily as possible. Thank you for watching guys again, please comment rate subscribe. Uh, email me with any queries that you might have, harry at harryfin.co.uk, and cheers for watching.